Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Gather around for ye tales of terror from beyond the grave. This was something that happened to my family and I back in 2007. My grandma's house was haunted by a demonic spirit and I had to travel to its realm and battle it to save my family. Summer 2007. I am 17. Mom, Dad, Sis, and I are traveling from our place in the city out to the country to visit grandma. We try to visit often after grandpa died of cancer, so she isn't lonely. Grandma is the real rosemary type, always cheerful, baking cookies, fussing over us all the time. We all love her, she's great. We arrive and grandma is visibly stressed. She tells us strange things have been happening and she thinks a hostile spirit is in the house with her. Lights flicker and turn on and off. Doors slam closed and open. Things disappear and are rearranged in different places, that sort of thing. Mom and Dad are surprised by Grandma's frankness. She's Christian, but never really talked about ghosts or anything. This just came out of left field. I feel guilty, but think to myself, is Grandma losing her marbles? She's not even that old. Dad kind of just chuckles. Really, Mom? He reassures her, it's probably just some old wiring and loose screws. Grandpa isn't around to do the house maintenance anymore. We all go inside. I can't explain it, but the house feels different. Like the hue has changed. It was weird. In spirits or not, something has obviously been upsetting Grandma. We were spending a few nights there. First night there, Sis and I are sleeping in the living room in the basement. Almost asleep. Then start hearing whispering through the vents. Just annoyed at first. Probably just mom and dad talking. Dad comes downstairs and tells us to be quiet and go to bed. He can hear us upstairs. Dad, it's not us. Yeah, right. Go to bed. Dad comes down again. I am not telling you again. It's not us. Tell dad to just sit and listen for a few minutes. He starts hearing the whispering in the vents. Well, where the fuck is it coming from? Must be a crack or something. Letting the wind in. I'll check it out tomorrow. Next night, whispering keeps going. A funky smell starts coming out of the vents like rotting flesh. Dad takes off the vent covers, looks everywhere, can't find source of noise or smell, calls HVAC. The HVAC guys go through the vents. They pull out a dismembered coyote corpse, limb by limb. The HVAC guy says this is the most fucked up thing he's ever seen and asks my dad if this is some kind of sick joke and threatens to call the cops. Who the fuck cuts up a dog and shoves him in the air vents? My dad says he already called 911 and they file a report with the police. On our way back to the city, mom and dad fighting the whole way back. They are both visibly freaked out. Weeks go by. Mom keeps in touch with grandma. She says things are getting stranger. The senpai and I head there for Thanksgiving what? Does he mean sister? This is when things went from bad to worse. Sleeping in the basement, hear a huge thud upstairs, along with grass breaking. Then, grandma shouting, Stop! Please! I get upstairs and hear another voice in grandma's room. Low pitched. Can't make out what's said. Dad's already busting through the door. Grandma's on the floor crying. Her dresser looks like it was thrown across the room, and her mirror is shattered. Dad shouting, Where the fuck is he? I heard him here. He searches everywhere, but no one else is there. Mom calls the police, and they come and search the place. No sign of forced entry anywhere in the house. They say they'll park her car in front to keep an eye for us. Dad is freaking out and has no explanation. He heard someone in the room and grandma's dresser is a big, solid, thick wood bastard. No way she could have moved it like it was found. Grandma tells mom and dad it said it was going to kill her, then us too, and keep our souls from going to heaven. Mom is crying at this point, and dad is manic. I've never seen him so pissed off. He wants grandma to come live with us, but she says it won't matter because it will just follow her wherever she goes. This just aggravates dad more, he is convinced someone is breaking in and fucking with her. Mom, sis, and grandma fall asleep on the couch. Dad patrols the house all night. 
The police come back the next day, saying they didn't find anything, but they'll keep regular checkups on the house. Xmas comes. Mom and Dad have been stressed as fuck, but they want to have a good Christmas for Grandma. We drive out to her place again. We arrive and meet up with Auntie and Uncle Earl and the two cousins and see Grandma. She is pale and thin. She looks like she barely sleeps. She's not the fun smiling grandma I knew. Things go from bad to terrible. Sister and I, sleeping in the basement again, hear a huge crash coming from the kitchen, like an explosion of glass and metal clanging everywhere. Scares the fuck out of me, shakes the whole house. Sis and I run upstairs as mom and dad, auntie and uncle come out of their rooms. Everything in the kitchen, all the cupboards, the fridge, pantry, everything was emptied out and stacked in the center of the room in a tower that reached its ceiling. Uncle Errol starts freaking out. What did you kids do? What the fuck is this? Tell him we heard a huge noise and rushed upstairs. We have no clue what's happening. A look of stone-cold terror goes across the adults' faces. They know there is no way in hell any of us kids did this. The room goes silent. I can hear the blood flowing in my face. It's so quiet. Auntie faints, and Uncle Earl rushes her to the couch. Mom sprints to Grandma's room to check on her. She's okay, just scared shitless. Dad is running around the house in his underwear, acting like a lunatic, waving a rolling pin around, screaming, Get the fuck out here! You think you could fuck with my mother? My family? Show yourself, you fucking coward! I'm in such shock. I don't even realize Sis and the cousins, grabbing my arms so tight I've lost circulation in my hands. Dad settles down. Mom agrees to take Auntie, Uncle, and the kids back to the city. Dad says he is going to drive out to meet his friend who works for a home security firm and get the best home security system money can buy. I agree to stay with Grandma a few days till Dad gets back. Just me and Granny. She sits in her chair and lights up a smoke. I haven't seen her smoke before. She quit before I was even born. Her dad's a good meaning man, but a damn fool. He can't see what's really happening here. Do you see? I tell her I don't know, but I'm willing to keep an open mind after all the freaky shit I've seen. She explains to me about her old friend. She is a descendant of African witch doctors. She might be able to give them answers. Grandma asks me to drive her to see her friend. Arrive about an hour later. Some small house on an acreage. Granny meets up with her friend, and we are invited inside. The place looks like an occult store. Jars of specimens, shrunken heads, all sorts of herbs and incenses on the shelves and tables everywhere. The witch doctor lady tells me that she doesn't have the means to fight off the demonic entity but she knows who does. She explains to me that I need to be willing to confront the entity and I'm the only one who can do it. Her and grandma are too old. She hands me a small vial and says it's an elixir made with detura, human blood, and some other unknown ingredients. She explains to me, I need it to talk to the Watuwa Nyasi. In African dialect, that means grass people. I need to go deep into a forested area, as far as I can get from human activity. But she warns me, the grass people will want something in return. Granny has always been there for us, so of course I say, I'll do whatever it takes. She gives me the directions for a back road that has a trail that leads deep into the bush, where she has met the grass people before. She tells me to find the clearing by the pond, and drink only half of the elixir and wait. She will return to the house with Grandma. It's a couple hour drive, but I eventually find the trail. It leads me down into a forested valley, and I find the clearing with the pond. The trees overhead filter out the sun rays, and the place looks very calm and artistically pleasing, like a scene from a movie. I sit in the grass and drink half the vial and wait. After a few minutes, I start feeling strange. I hear whispering coming from all around me. What's it doing here? Is it lost? It hears us. Why is its kind here? I start seeing dozens of little glowing blue eyes all around me peeking out of the grass. 
whispering at me, moving closer. It sees us? It sees us. I'm freaked out, but managed to say, My grandma's house is haunted. I was told you can help me. You are the grass people? It speaks? It speaks. Make trade. Trade. I managed to stutter out my story in more detail to them. Turn around. Around. I look behind me. On the ground is a small glass vial full of a black liquid and a round piece of glass the size of a stone. Drink is what let you see us, but stronger. Let you enter demon's realm. Take crystal. Plunge deep. Say incantation. Bring back to us. Now go. I return to Granny's house for the final showdown. I meet up with Grandma and the shaman lady at the house, explain to them what happened and what I was told to do. Shaman lady takes me to the basement and says I must perform the ritual alone. I drink the vial the grass people gave me. It hits very fast and strongly. I feel the effects immediately. I'm floating in some weird quasi-fluid, surrounded by colored blobs. I look out and I'm still in the basement but it's like I'm behind hazy glass. Like I'm inside a lava lamp or something. One of the blobs grows a face and begins to laugh at me, saying I was a fool to come here and I will be trapped and forced to watch my family die. Then I will die. I tell it to go to hell and stay the fuck away from grandma. It comes at me and I start to scream and fight like hell. But kicking and punching a giant shapeless blob while floating in some weird semi-fluid is awkward and difficult to say the least. Plunge it deep. I remember what the grass people said, and I let my defense down so the blob demon can get me. Then, with all my strength, I plunged my fist with a crystal as deep in it as I could, and said the incantation before it covered my face. It worked because I felt the crystal get hot as fuck like I was holding a burning coal, and I know I heard it because it screamed out. Its grip on me started to loosen. The pain from the crystal makes me scream out as well. There is a huge flash of light, and I black out. I come to. I'm on the bed back in Grandma's house. She's telling me I did it. The demon is gone, and how proud she is of me. I am just happy to see her smile. She hasn't smiled in so long. The crystal is still in my hand. It's black now. Mom and Dad both arrive. Dad says the new security system will be installed tomorrow. Grandma says she won't need it. She doesn't go into detail, but says with the shaman lady and my help, we were able to clear the house. Mom and Dad look confused as fuck, but are just relieved to see Granny smiling and with life in her face again. We all cry together because somehow we feel it's over. The house again feels different, the hue has changed, but like it's back to normal. No flickering lights or freaky noises. Shaman lady reminds me, it's not over for me, I have to go back. I drive back out to the place in the forest where I first met the grass people. I drank the remaining potion from the shaman lady and placed the now black crystal on the ground in front of me. I've done what you've asked, thank you. This time, only one set of eyes appeared. Don't think. We have price. We will come to you, at a time of our choosing to collect our price. Now leave here and never return. Your presence is irritating to us. I don't know what this means, but I leave. Shaken. Yeah, that was some crazy shit. Shaman Lady ended up moving in with Grandma. They are both doing great. So are the rest of the family. Me? After college, I moved downtown. I live in an apartment top floor. Took me nearly a year to save money and convincing the property manager, but I got triple pane safety glass and a solid steel airtight security door installed. The grass people can't get me. Not in here, 